Welcome to our show. I'm Diana Day, and today we are going to talk about the legacy of General Stewart. We're so honored to have our guest speaker here, and he's uh, Mr. John Easterbrook. Thank, Thank you, John. Thank you. Yes, and John is the grandson of General Stewart. General Stewart is the person that helped Chinese uh, to defend uh, Japanese to win the World War II. And this year is the 70th anniversary of World War II. Um, we are so happy that my friend um, uh, Grace and Peter Wang introduced me with John and told me about the story. And they are so passionate. And uh, when they mentioned about your grandfather, and I was so touched. And I want the more Chinese people to learn about his story and about what you are doing right now. So tell us something about your grandfather. Well, my grandfather, of course, had a great respect and admiration for the Chinese people. Mm -hmm. And in fact, his association with the Chinese people really got started in 1920 when he was the Army's first Chinese language student. And he went to Peking mm -hmm. to learn the language. 1920s, so that's probably the earliest uh, you know, American soldier went to China. Well, I think there were American mm -hmm. soldiers there before mm -hmm. that, but mm -hmm. they, he, again, he was the first Chinese language so, student. So in he the speaks Army. good Chinese. He spoke fluent Chinese, mm -hmm. fluent Mandarin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great, yes. So, so he went there to learn Chinese for three years? For three years, he was a, a language student, mm -hmm. and uh, during part of that time, uh, he was out in Shanxi province, uh, where he was de designated as the chief engineer on a construction of a famine relief road mm -hmm. out there. And for months, he was out there working elbow to elbow with Lao Baixing mm -hmm. and uh, constructing this road. And I think that's where he first really began to understand the Chinese character and came to appreciate the Chinese. So he actually worked side by side with Lao Baixing. He uh, did. So what's his impression to Chinese people? Well, he summed it up very well in, in his writing. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, the Chinese people are fundamentally great. Fundamentally no, great. Fundamentally great. <laughs> okay. No bars of caste or religion. Mm -hmm. And he said, they're honest, mm -hmm. frugal, mm -hmm. industrious, cheerful, independent, mm -hmm. tolerant, friendly, mm -hmm. and courteous. Mm -hmm. I agree all of that, except, except the one, and uh, cheerful. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I was in China when I was a child, and I, I, don't, I don't see many people that are that cheerful, but all the others, I totally agree with him. But the Chinese people mm -hmm. have a great sense of humor. Yes, yes, that's different, yes. Yeah. Different Eastern humorists, yes. Mm -hmm. So actually, though, so he actually went back to China after that. Yes, his next tour was in 1935 mm -hmm. or 1936 to 1939, when he was assigned to the 15th U.S. Infantry mm -hmm. in uh, at that time Tencent. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we can see he was surrounded by many Chinese people and white people like him. What kind of person he is? Well, he's, he's a very low-key person. He was a very modest person. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he would go out and travel in China, he lived like the Chinese did. He ate like the Chinese did. He traveled like the Chinese did, boat, on foot, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think he really uh, kind of became almost a part of them. Mm. Actually, he passed away when you were at age of six. So how did you get to know so much about him? Well, of course, my, my grandmother lived uh, considerably longer and mm -hmm. uh, would uh, hear stories from her and from my mother mm -hmm. and my father, who served with my grandfather mm -hmm. uh, during the war in, mm -hmm. in Burma. Mm -hmm. So actually, you know, your father uh, at that time was working with the uh, Kuomintang. Yes. Kuomintang, uh, Kuomintang, <laughs> yes. You know the, the Chinese words of this, right? Mm -hmm. So help China to fight against Japanese. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, at that time, mm -hmm. the U.S. recognized the Guomindang as the ruling party in China, mm -hmm. and that was who they were dealing with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's also part of the story, part, part of the history, which we didn't know when we were uh, children, when we were a child. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, it is, and it's gradually now coming to light mm -hmm. through a number of, of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a part of Chinese history, mm -hmm. and the truth must come out. Yes, yes, that's why we're here today. So actually, you got this uh, information from Hoover uh, Library? Uh, a lot of the, mm -hmm. all of Stillwell's papers are at the Hoover Archives mm -hmm. at Stanford University. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a prolific writer. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many documents there to mm -hmm. digest if one wants to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it gives insights into his character mm -hmm. and what he was doing. So in early 20s, your grandfather actually went to China and fell in love with people there. And uh, actually this has continued as a legacy for your whole family, right? Indeed it has, yes. yes. Uh, my mother picked it up once China mm -hmm. and the U.S. reestablished relations. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother and my aunt uh, made a number of trips over to China. Yes, I see this picture that your mother and your aunt with Song Qingling. Yes, my mother reestablished mm -hmm. contacts mm -hmm. with a number of people because yes. uh, mm -hmm. Song Qingling probably at the head of that mm -hmm. uh, list uh, because uh, she and General Stilwell, during the war, got along extremely well. Mm -hmm. And General Stilwell had great respect for Sung Ching Ling, mm -hmm. because she loved China and the Chinese people so much. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. And Sung Ching Ling also wrote something for your grandfather. Yes, yes. yes. So what did she I, say? If I might. Yes, please. Uh, Sung Ching Ling said, General Stilwell always carried the interests of the Chinese people in his heart and he foresaw the strength and unity of the Chinese people, mm -hmm. creating a new and powerful China. I look on him as a great friend. His steadfastness in principle gave me reassurance in my work mm -hmm. to help the people of China. The Chinese people will never forget his faith and friendship. Wow. years your grandfather passed away, uh, you, uh, your mom, your family still continues, continued this. And just now we mentioned about Song Qingling. And also she connect with uh, this picture is... Yes, uh, that's Wang Bingnan. Wang Bingnan. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Very, very warm and very mm -hmm. courteous man. Wow, you know, those are also Kang Ke Qing and Zhang Ai Ping. Yes, and yeah. Huang Hua. Huang Hua, wow, those mm -hmm. are the... Huang Hua was the first ambassador of... Uh, you are uh, uh, China representing to the China UN. to, to the, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Wow. So, but your, your grandfather was very low key when you were a child and you didn't really know about this, right? No, I really didn't. And mm -hmm. uh, he, to me, he was grandfather, mm -hmm. but he was absent so much because he was over in China and Burma mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. of the time when I was uh, growing up, up until the time I was six. Mm -hmm. But uh, and I only really can remember him on a couple of instances. Mm -hmm. But he is, was really the person that, uh, you know, led your whole family to be th this friendship to China. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because yes. my mother mm -hmm. uh, spent a lot of her childhood over there, as did all the other uh, Stillwell children. Mm -hmm. And uh, they uh, developed the same respect and admiration for the Chinese people. So after many years, you mom uh, and your aunt went back to China and to follow your grandfather's step? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think, yeah, n not so much to follow his steps, maybe to, to renew these friendships mm -hmm. uh, that had existed so many years ago. Yes. And, uh, yeah, we see yeah. this picture. And uh, that's, most people have passed away <laughs> in this picture. <laughs> but uh, there's a little girl yes. there yes. standing at the corner here. Well, this is a very interesting story behind that picture. Is that mm -hmm. Now, that picture came from the Stillwell collection at the Hoover Archives. Mm -hmm. And one year I was going to Kunming. Mm -hmm. And so I got copies of that picture and a couple others that were taken at the same time and took them over to Kunming. And I met a historian there uh, by the name of Gu Xuya. 
And I showed that to him and asked him, where was that taken? He said, well, oh, of course, Dragon Gate. Longman, <laughs> yes. But he, <clears throat> he was interested in the pictures mm -hmm. for a historical perspective mm -hmm. because there were so many Guomindang generals yes. in those pictures. Mm -hmm. And he later showed it to uh, the grandson of General Pan Yu Kun, mm -hmm. a man by the name of Yan Huan. Mm -hmm. And Huan's a good friend of mine now. Oh. And, uh, Pan Yu Kun was the commander of the uh, Xin Yi Jun. Well, he command, first mm -hmm. of all, he commanded the 50th mm -hmm. Division mm -hmm. in, in Burma, mm -hmm. and later, I think, became the commander of the new First Army. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, actually, you showed the picture, and he helped you to find the little girl. Well, he, Yan Huan, is the one that tracked down this little girl mm -hmm. and found that she was, uh, her name is uh, Huang Min Nan. Huang Ming Nan. Yeah. Yes, and she's Minan. living in Beijing. Mm. And so a couple years later, I made very good copies of that picture and mm -hmm. one other that she was in mm -hmm. and took them over to her and, and gave it to her. And she had never seen those pictures before. That's interesting. You know, when this picture shows she's only a little girl, and later on when you meet with her, she's already... Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> with some gray hairs. Middle age, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. And she turned out as the daughter of Huang Wei. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. And Huang Wei is the Guomin Gemin Jun Di Jiu Tuan the Tuan Zhang, and he was also the Liu Shi Qi Jun the Shi Zhang. And he was captured on 1948 uh, mm -hmm. and was released on 1975. Uh, and he passed away in 1989. Yes. Yeah, wow, that's such a history. Yes. Yeah, it, actually he stayed in China the rest of his life. Then you, family, reconnect with this, with them. Yes, yes. Wow. It, it's so heartwarming yes. to be able to do these reconnections, mm -hmm. and meet these people, mm -hmm. and not the least of which, of course, is providing them mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. uh, pictures and photo or other documents. Mm -hmm. Uh, that they had never seen before. Yeah, and I also heard that uh, Zhu De gave your father an album. Well, uh, actually, yes. When my grandfather left China in 1944, mm -hmm. uh, Zhu De sent him an, a photo album. Mm. And that had been in the family for all those years up until 1967. Mm -hmm. uh, when my mother took that back and gave it back to Kang Keqing. Mm -hmm. Well, Kang Keqing must be really <clears throat> you know, as a, he, he, she's the wife of Judah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she must be really mm -hmm. touched. I think so. Yes. I think so. Old yes. friends reunion. Yes. Yes, and also we see a picture of this man, and uh, look at him. Yeah, this is uh, both the picture of him. Yes. So he's uh, in, in <coughs> during the period 1920 mm -hmm. to 1923 when my grandfather was the language student. Mm -hmm. Uh, he progressed so quickly, mm -hmm. he had a very great uh, fluency mm -hmm. uh, and ability in languages. Mm -hmm. He progressed so quickly that he just needed a tutor instead of just going to school. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman, Mr. Guan, uh, had been in the imperial court mm -hmm. and was now, at that time, teaching Chinese at this mm -hmm. school in Peking. So he hired him as a tutor. And he became like a grandfather. No wonder to the your, your grandfather's ch Chinese is so good <laughs> because he's as a personal tutor. Yes. Yes, yes. But they, mm -hmm. after they left in 1923 mm -hmm. and came back mm -hmm. in 1936, they brought Mr. Guan down to live with the family again oh, oh, in uh, Tianjin. Oh, so later on, actually, this is uh, your. F your family, your, your grandfather's family with uh, this tutor? Yes. This is your grandfather and part your, your mom and uh, this is your mom? Yes. Yes, so, so then what happened next when you reunion, reunion he probably already passed away. Well, <coughs> he, he, as I said, lived with a family in Tianjin uh -huh. from uh, 36 to 39. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, 26 to 29. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> Then in 1935, when Stilwell was reassigned to China as the attache in the U.S. legation, they contacted Mr. Guan again and 
persuaded him to come and live with the family once mm -hmm. more. As a grandpa and also a tutor. And, yes. Yes. But uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately, he passed away oh. shortly thereafter. Oh, okay. So that's the story. But actually, you, your family went back to China and actually found his granddaughter, right? Well, the, the way that happened was that a, a good friend of ours, mm -hmm. uh, Li Jing, mm -hmm. who is a writer for a magazine in Beijing, wrote an article about mm -hmm. Stillwell and mm -hmm. included uh, mention of Mr. Guan and had that picture that was taken mm -hmm. in Tianjin mm -hmm. in there. And shortly after it was published, uh, a lady contacted her and mm -hmm. said, I am the granddaughter of Mr. Guan. Mr. Guan. Oh. And my mother, when she had traveled to China many times, always tried to find descendants of Mr. Guan, but was unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. But thanks to Li Jing and her article, we reconnected mm -hmm. uh, with Guan Rui, mm -hmm. and I've given her all the pictures, copies of all the pictures I have of her grandfather. Mm -hmm. And to her great credit, she has enlarged those pictures oh. and put them in a very big album. Very, oh. very nice. What a nice story. So this is the way that your family continued this friendship with the uh, Chinese people and yes. reun re reunion with the, uh, you know, those descendants. Of, yes. yes, and it's so heartwarming to meet these mm -hmm. people and, mm -hmm. and they remember so well, mm -hmm. as do so many of the Chinese people. Well, this is also covered by CCTV4 about your family story. Yes. Tom,是二战中统领中国战区的统帅。Frequently And uh, so your family actually uh, started a new journey uh, with Stuart Scholarship for the Chinese students. Yes, um, that happened uh, probably in the late 70s, in the about 1979, mm -hmm. when my mother and aunt and 10 other people were on a tour sponsored by the Friendship Association. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when they came back, they decided they needed to do something nice for the Friendship Association. Mm -hmm. So they invited a member of the Friendship Association to come over, live in the homes mm -hmm. of the members of the tour, mm -hmm. and take a class at then Monterey Institute of International Studies. The Stillwell Scholarship really had its genesis in the late 70s. And it's a manifestation of my grandfather, General Stillwell's, respect and admiration for the Chinese people. He, in 1920, after World War I, was the Army's first Chinese language student and served in China three separate tours prior to World War II. During that time, he got to kind of rub elbows with the common people of China, Lao Bai Xing, the old hundred names. And this is where he grew his respect and admiration for the Chinese people. In the late 70s, when China first started opening, my mother and my aunt traveled to China. And when they came back, after being hosted by the Chinese People's Association for Friendship, they decided it'd be a nice thing to do to invite a member of the Friendship Association over to first stay in the US. And that was the first really scholar, I guess, that came to the Monterey Institute. We've had about 35 scholars attend Monterey Institute for their master's degree. I am one of the academics in China that opposes the globalization. My mom, before I came here, she said um, she couldn't believe that, you know, a total stranger from a, a totally different country 
would do this to help you to um, actually doesn't require anything back. In my opinion, this is something amazing. The family has um, meant a great deal to me and to all the scholars that have received um, the benefit of the scholarship. It has made a, a difference in our lives. Had I not been um, the recipient of this scholarship, my life would turn out very differently. While well, you're here, you need, you're gonna have to come up to our house. They actually give you the support like a uh, like a real family. Like make you feel like you're a part of something special. You know the energy that that you acquire from these young people who come over here is just extraordinary, and it just it enthuses you to to keep going and to make sure that we do the best we can for them. They are you know just such special people with such deep love for the Chinese people and for the Chinese culture and with such deep understanding and that vision to help build bridges between people in the U.S. and people in the China. When I uh, graduate and in the future I will try to help people and to carry on the things that the Stillwell family wants to convey and you know just continue to be part of this. The Chinese would say very heartwarming that it's continuing and, and is, uh, is so successful. And I think it's both a tribute not only to the scholars that we have under the program, but to, to my mother, my aunt, and, and my grandfather, who loved the Chinese people so much. Trying to find a way to help the Chinese mm -hmm. people through education. Mm -hmm. So the four ladies got together and founded the Stillwell Scholarship. Mm -hmm and immediately started fundraising activities. Mm -hmm. And it was a hard, hard work, but it was really a labor of love for all of them. Mm -hmm. And they sponsored and sold tickets for mm -hmm. screenings of movies mm -hmm. dealing with China, mm -hmm. had receptions with food donated by local mm -hmm. restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, my aunt, who paints mm -hmm. in the Chinese style, mm -hmm. Uh, made some posters that they were selling. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an annual solicitation mm -hmm. letter. Mm -hmm. And probably the biggest thing was that in the spring of each year, my mother would take a tour to China. Mm -hmm. and in the fall, my aunt would take a tour to China. Mm -hmm. and they didn't take any money, but they asked people to contribute mm -hmm. to the Stillwell Scholarship. Yeah, it's not easy at all. But how do you uh, select the students? and? Uh, how, how did, what kind of people you're looking for to support? The, there is a committee, mm -hmm. Stillwell Scholarship Committee, that looks at the files of all the Chinese students. And the Stillwell Scholarship is just for Chinese students mm -hmm. pursuing a master's degree. Mm -hmm. But they screen the files of all of the Chinese students. And through a process of looking at their qualifications, and their history, and what they have done, uh, make a selection for that awardee for that year. How many students have been have benefited? This? There, there have been over over thirty, well over thirty mm -hmm. number have mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. benefited by the scholarship. This must have changed their life, I believe. It, it is a late life changing mm -hmm. uh, event mm -hmm. for these students to mm -hmm. not necessarily to receive the scholarship, mm -hmm. but to be able to come. Mm -hmm to the Monterey Institute or, and uh, study there. Yeah, it's not only about the financial support, it's also when the students come to the United States and your family also give them a lot of support, right? We do, we try and stay mm -hmm. in touch with uh, each student that comes over that's mm -hmm. a Stillwell Scholar mm -hmm. and uh, give them a little benefit of uh, seeing what the United States is, is all about and mm -hmm. the culture in the, here in the United States mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And just maybe build another pillar under that bridge between mm -hmm. China and the U.S. Yeah, I, I know Mr. Peter Wang and uh, Grace Wang for many years, and they actually they have the same vision. So that's why you and Peter work together, right? Yes, and, and most recently and most heartwarming mm -hmm. is that a few years ago, uh, Peter and Grace, through the Wang Foundation, mm -hmm decided to sponsor another Stillwell Scholarship. Mm -hmm. and it's called now the Wong Foundation Stillwell Scholarship. Mm -hmm. And the selections are made exactly the same way mm -hmm. of the students. But now we're, we have doubled the number of 
the scholarships the we can award. Yes, the students who can benefit from this. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, What's the story about the students? Uh, well, already more than 30 students benefit from the scholars, and uh, so what, what have you seen about their life change? Well, it, it really has changed their life, and they have gone on to <clears throat> make you know, great successes of themselves in industry, in government, entrepreneurs, uh, teachers, mm -hmm. uh, deans of uh, foreign language mm -hmm. departments mm -hmm. in universities back in China mm -hmm. and just uh, any number of activities and of course people are all different mm -hmm. so as long as they're successful and they're happy mm -hmm. then it's wonderful so how do you define success I think you have to ask them <laughs> I, that question so they define but the success by themselves I think so yes 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 so well um, but you, you, when you offer the scholarship to those students, then you probably have some hope or wish. So what's your wish? Well, I think the, mm -hmm. the key wish mm -hmm. is that they become sort of ambassadors. Mm -hmm. uh, understand a little bit about Stillwell, of course, mm -hmm. but be more so be ambassadors mm -hmm. uh, between the U.S. and China. Mm -hmm. and the American people and the Chinese mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. and increase the understanding and betterment of the relations. Mm. This is very important. This is so important. I think that everybody should work on this together. So, well, you and Peter and besides, well, all of you and how many people, do you have enough donors and what's the needs for, for this? Well, we, <coughs> our hope for the future of the, the scholarship is to be able to expand it and help more Chinese students uh, mm -hmm. coming to the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the world is an imperfect place, mm -hmm. but the hope is that through these young scholars mm -hmm. is that it, understanding will be improved and the world in the future mm -hmm. will be a better place. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Stillwell Scholarship is a great opportunity for people who have been successful in life mm -hmm. and who desire uh, to con contribute to the Chinese people mm -hmm. and continue the legacy mm -hmm. of uh, Stillwall, uh, which is the friendship with, between the two peoples mm -hmm. and increasing understanding mm -hmm. and improving the relations. Mm -hmm. And I would certainly invite anybody who is interested in learning more about the Stillwall Scholarship to contact either Peter Jesse at the now the Middlebury mm -hmm. Institute of International Studies mm -hmm. at Monterey mm -hmm. uh, or myself mm -hmm. and information on our telephone numbers and emails mm -hmm. are posted. Yeah, actually the General Stewart, his family has been uh, putting so much effort to continue this friendship and support Chinese students uh, for all these years but they're quite low-key. Students apply for the Monterey uh, Institute and then they screen them. So students, when they apply for the uh, college, they don't even know there is a scholarship exists. Th that's correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and interestingly enough, uh, one of our more recent uh, Stillwell mm -hmm. scholars, when she found out that she was being offered the Stillwell scholarship, her parents could not believe it. Mm -hmm. How could somebody they don't even know in a foreign country? be offering money to help their daughter mm -hmm. get her master's degree. Yeah, so that's uh, 10000 a year, right? Y yes, that's for two years. Two, for two years, yes. yeah. So it's 20000 Yes. Yeah, well, it's a large amount for a family in China or for the people who really have such needs. Well, uh, we're so honored to have you, John, and sitting here and to share the story. And uh, we should work, to work together to continue uh, General Stewart's legacy. Thank you very much. Thank you.